<laughs> this is a miracle. From the moment it was conceptualized, 1995's A Goofy Movie had to fight to get out from under the overbearing thumb of the Disney machine while simultaneously dealing with creative conflict, budgetary constraints, and a disheartening lack of faith in the project. That it even got released is a triumph, and the chance of it becoming popular? That was about as likely as Goofy and Max learning to get along. I'm not your little boy anymore, Dad! Got my own life now! I know that! I just wanted to be part of it. In the early 90s, the Disney empire was in its much-loved renaissance era, and chairman Jeffrey Katzenberg was king. Beginning in 1989 with The Little Mermaid, and escalating from there with instant classics like Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, and The Lion King, the Disney renaissance is looked back on with rose-tinted nostalgia goggles for audiences of a certain age. But one movie that usually gets excluded from the discussion during this time period is a goofy movie. Most other Disney movies from around this period dominated theaters which prompted the company to lean heavily into merchandising, sequels, and integration into their theme parks. At the time of its release, Goofy Movie simply didn't make enough to get the same treatment. Unlike the other classics, Goofy Movie wasn't a product of Disney's core animation studio. It was produced by Disney Movie Tunes, a now defunct branch of the Walt Disney Company which dealt mostly with direct-to-video releases. And most of the animation was outsourced to Disney Satellite Studios in France, Australia, and Canada. Goofy Movie's roots as a goof troop feature cheapened the product for general audiences and Disney executives, who really hobbled the movie before it could even reach theaters. That was the movie! That's a top 10 four-star must-see! Katzenberg was the one who asked for a Goofy movie to be made in the first place. According to Jim Magon, Goof Troop veteran and the first of three screenwriters to be hired onto the project, Katzenberg had been struggling to bond with his teenage daughter. After finding themselves together on a long car trip, they managed to reconnect, and he wanted a movie to reflect that story. Chris Matheson of Bill & Ted fame and the inexperienced Brian Pimentel joined the writing team. Kevin Lima, who was known at the time as a character artist on Brave Little Toaster and several Renaissance classics, was brought on to make his directorial debut. And the voice cast included the prolific Jim Cummings, Wallace Shawn, and of course Bill Farmer, who had been the official voice of Goofy since 1987. Yo. <laughs> but it didn't start out that way. According to Lima, our man of the hour Jeffrey Katzenberg pushed back on the idea of casting Bill Farmer for a feature film. He didn't think anyone would want to sit through 90 minutes of Farmer's cartoony stylings and, instead, wanted Goofy to sound like a normal dad. Jeffrey Katzenberg thought that Goofy shouldn't talk like Goofy, that he should have like a regular voice like Steve Martin. Um, I was acting. This was one of the first real signs of trouble. Replacing the iconic voice of Goofy with something generic would have been a mistake. So Lima fought to get Farmer on board, and it seemed Katzenberg relented mostly due to general disinterest in the project. But keeping Farmer was the right call. He brought more than just yucks to the table. There's a wholesome and gentle nature to his performance that still manages to be exactly the right amount of, well, goofy. Well, don't tell me you don't remember Hi Dad Soup. You used to spell things out like, uh, Hi Dad or... Hasta la vista or I love you. When compared to other animated features at the time, a Goofy movie was allotted a microscopic budget and the team was essentially left to figure things out on the fly. To put things into perspective, The Lion King was released on a budget of $45 million in 1994. One year later, a Goofy movie was expected to be made for just $18 million. In the words of producer Don Hahn, it wasn't even a B movie, it was a C movie. But since nothing about a Goofy movie's production could go smoothly, the animation process also hit a snag. One of the monitors the team was using to film their animation had a blown out pixel. Evidently, nobody noticed the issue until they had filmed about three quarters of the movie and realized that every scene they had finished had a black dot on it. They were forced to go back and reshoot all of their hard work, which took so much time that they actually missed their original Thanksgiving deadline by about five months. I got the only video. <laughs> Let's just get out of here. And at that point, the Goofy Movie team wasn't even sure the movie was going to come out. It would probably still be sitting unfinished in a dusty corner of the Disney vault if not for the bizarre office politics happening at the company in the mid-90s. CEO Michael Eisner was having a very public falling out over what Katzenberg saw as an unfulfilled promise of promotion. Their friend and co-worker Frank Wells had just recently died in a tragic helicopter accident. 
A mix of grief and corporate ambition led Katzenberg to pursue Wells' job as president of the Walt Disney Company, which he was ultimately denied. This all culminated in Katzenberg resigning from his position at Disney in 1994. Eight days after I left the Walt Disney Company, humiliated, embarrassed, I announced DreamWorks Animation. <laughs> so the only reason a Goofy movie got pushed into theaters was because it, and several other animated features, had become production under Katzenberg, and the company was essentially under obligation to fulfill his corporate legacy. Sadly, part of that legacy was a severe disinterest in the film. It's largely because of the minimal marketing that a Goofy movie languished in theaters, and in the eyes of Disney executives, it was nothing more than a minor blip on their radar. But the movie's stellar quality could not be ignored forever. You are gonna be famous, buddy. Especially with Roxanne. Even though they were curtailed at every turn, Lima and the Goofy Movie team were passionate about what they were making and they put their all into it. They managed to create something that spoke to a very different demographic. Once a Goofy Movie found its way onto home video, it was young black millennials who took to the film first and most intensely seeing themselves represented in ways other Disney movies at the time weren't even attempting. While there isn't a single human character in the movie, it's been dubbed the blackest Disney film ever made due to its reflections on family life, pop culture, and general nerdom. The TV show Atlanta even dedicated an entire episode to a fake documentary detailing the fabricated story of how the movie was made and the fictional black man behind it. He wanted to tackle everything in this movie. Segregation, single parenting, and he knew the perfect character to do it. From Powerline's Prince, Michael Jackson, and Bobby Brown inspirations, to the way Principal Mazur unfairly maligns Max as a gang member for the way he dresses, both the joys and struggles of black Americans were on full display in a Goofy movie. That early fandom is what spurred the movie's eventual success on VHS, and it's what keeps it alive today. While we don't know the exact numbers, we do know that the home video sales were impressive enough for Disney to order a sequel five years after the first movie's initial release. Hi, everybody! <laughs> I'm just a yearning for some learning. Official merchandise has started to crop up over the years, and more recently, Max has even appeared at the Disney parks to dance to stand out and eye to eye. Clearly, Disney's early reservations about the movie were totally unfounded and they spent the better part of three decades trying to correct their mistake. But audiences could have told them they were wrong from the very beginning. The film is painfully awkward, emotionally profound, and packed full with creative ideas. And unlike a lot of official Disney Renaissance era films, a Goofy movie feels just as relevant today as it did 28 years ago. And that's all we have for you today. Thanks so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave us a like and subscribe to Nerdstalgic so you don't miss what we put out next.